It is my great delight and pleasure to have another icon of Pakistani politics, law, and in the general society to come and speak with us on our London studio program, Election 2024, Pakistan. I am Dr. Suhail Qureshi from News with my program on Election 2024, Pakistan that has mesmerized millions or rather hundreds of millions of people all around the world. Today, we are going to speak with Chaudhary Azaz Essen, a very famous uh, Supreme Court lawyer and a former president chair of the Supreme Court bar and a politician, a senator, a former minister in the People's Party government and of late supporting a rather dissident political party called PTI. We are going to ask a very detailed question about Chaudhary Azazasan about his own life, his personal life, his journey in life, and finally about the election 2024 in the saga that is unfolding right in front of the eyes of pretty much the entire world. So please stay tuned and we very warm welcome uh, again to Mr. Chaudhary Azazasan. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Azazasan Saab. You've been uh, very kind to give us uh, your time in this very difficult time when you are fighting for the PTI and, um, and the uh, difficulties you're having and challenges that you're having with the Election Commission. I wanted to ask your view about the recent Peshawar High Court decision uh, which the Election Commission has complained and apparently they have won that their suspension or of uh, PTI uh, election symbol bat. So what would you say on that? Let me first uh, say thank you to you for having me on this show. But secondly, let me also explain, uh, make it clear that I'm not uh, fighting for PTI, I'm fighting for principle yeah. because I'm not in PTI. But I think it's a very uh, grievous kind of a blow that is being caused to it. And a very, in a very illegal and unconstitutional manner, uh, in, by, with which it is being treated in discriminatory uh, attitude of the election commission, and uh, the uh, high, the high court, Peshawar High Court's judgment order of today, I clear find it clearly wrong and based on a complete misconception of the, our electoral laws and uh, the constitution. If I may go with uh, points number one, two, three, four, I think your viewers better understand this uh, my uh, contention, and that is that uh, uh, simply stated, the uh, a vote uh, at the ballot is a fundamental right constitution by the Supreme Court in the case of. Uh, Mrs. Miss Bay, Miss Bay, go to she in 1988. Our symbol of arrow was awarded to us. Secondly, the symbol itself is a fundamental right because it actuates the vote to be cast and enables the voter to uh, cast the vote. Why? Because we have about 70 percent illiteracy in this country as in India and Bangladesh and we have uh, uh, voters who cannot recognize the name against of their own favorite candidate against whose name they want to uh, stamp their uh, the stamps that they have, uh, to put a seal on that name. Therefore, they are given symbols, easy symbols, like the Pakistan People's Party has an arrow, the Pakistan Muslim League has a, a lion, and uh, the PTI has a bat. Uh, now, the reason for this, as I said, because it enables, it is a facilitator, the identification of the favored candidate of by each voter, uh, for, uh, he is he or casting a vote. Now, the symbol is therefore as important as the vote itself. 
and what is the fundamental right and so is the symbol as held by the Supreme Court. Now, what the election is trying to do, bribing the, uh, a party of uh, its, right, its, its rightful uh, symbol, uh, in this case, uh, didn't it to not the party normally said that it's the party symbol. It's not really the party symbol alone. It's the uh, candidate symbol plus it's the symbol of every voter who wants to vote, particularly who wants to vote for that uh, uh, particular candidate and party symbol. It can uh, the voter can recognize, but not the names. Distinguish between the names. Uh, what is the effect of this denial of symbol is that it is a, it's like a the party it's being on the ballot and deregistering the ballot of the party. This is the exclusive domain of the Supreme Court of Pakistan under Article 17 of our Constitution. No other authority uh, or person can dissolve a political party. And this amounts by denying them the vote, uh, the right to vote. They are denying them the right to exist as a political party. This uh, is uh, also, as I said, illegal because what cannot be done directly cannot be done indirectly as per English and Pakistani law all over the Commonwealth. So the election commission is not competent to take away the symbol. But it has, and this is what the Peshawar High Court had originally ruled that the symbol will remain uh, unless the, a contrary uh, law is found, uh, which the Election Commission does not have, and which uh, the, uh, it can't contrive to have either. Yeah, thank you. Now, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, another issue is that if you want a name, one name of one voter to be excluded from uh, the uh, uh, voters list, the jing, hundreds of voters, in fact, millions, several million voters, uh, you have to go through a, a prolonged due process uh, under uh, the Electoral Rose Act, now a part of the election that is 2017. And that process. Uh, leading of evidence, cross-examination of witnesses, uh, testifying documents. Uh, it's not a simple thing. But here, uh, the Election Commission has illegally uh, and unconstitutionally uh, actually disenfranchised millions of voters who would have voted for this party because all parties, uh, big, the bigger to say, uh, the Pakistan People's Party, the Muslim League Nawaz, and uh, uh, the Pakistan Rika Insaf. They have millions of following, following in tens of millions in fact, and uh, almost a voter. So uh, the election commission has tried to do a one stroke uh, of pen uh, disenfranchise about 20 million people at least who cannot read and cannot write and cannot recognize the candidate on the ballot paper. This is entirely illegal. It's unconstitutional. I'm quite confident that the Supreme Court will press down and set the High Court's latest order, uh, set it aside. Excellent. Thank you very much. I mean, I have noted several uh, good points, but I will just hammer on to the two. One is the Supreme Court's direction that there has to be free and fair election. And it's not just a, a sermon or sermon statement for that matter. That means that every single facet or caveat of ensuring that every single citizen of Pakistan is able to cast his or her vote without any coercion or without any force. One. Number two, that the state must ensure or facilitate that such process remains free and fair. And you rightly said that 70% of the Pakistani population is um, um, illiterate and they cannot understand one name from the other. And the symbol of uh, cricket bat 
is synonymous with Imran Khan and the party. So it will have a massive, massive um, impact on the, uh, on the transparency of the election. So uh, do you think that there, there are some other forces working on, the, on, on this system to ensure that one particular party does not have a free and um, level playing uh, field? It's quite obvious. The people are not, did not deceived. Uh, the manner in which uh, uh, Mr. Nawaz Sharif, one of the premier candidates, uh, was uh, uh, allowed to go out of the country, although he was a convict, uh, he was allowed to go out of the country by the uh, then army chief and the then uh, uh, justices. Uh, and the way he uh, he was allowed only f eight uh, for medical and medical treatment, but he spent four years uh, uh, jumping bail and jumping jail, so to say. And uh, the way he was, he came back without his, his conviction having been set aside. He was seen off at the L London Heathrow Airport by the uh, High Commissioner of Pakistan, which is the equivalent of an ambassador uh, to Pakistan, uh, to, to, to uh, Pakistan's ambassador, sorry, to Pakistan's high commissioner to London. And uh, uh, the way he was received when he landed back in Pakistan, although yet a convict uh, with the police chief, chiefs uh, saluting him and escorting him to a huge public meeting, which was not as huge as they make it believe, make it seem to be, but a public meeting. Um, and the way he has been uh, going around freely and has been obtaining acquittals because the prosecution states, itself states, that it has found no evidence uh, against uh, Mr. Mia, Mr. Nawaz Sharif. Uh, these uh, uh, obviously show that the compact, there's a compact between the established order of uh, the state and the uh, and me, Mr. Nawaz Sharif, and there is not a le level playing field, and there is an outcry already that there be uh, given to all candidates and all parties an equal, equal and level playing field. That's the big controversy these days, and by denying him the symbol of a bat, uh, Imran, is uh, not being allowed to play level playing field. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I think the, the general impression is this, that the unseen or seen hands have been in the political process of Pakistan or the democratic processes of Pakistan for a very long time. But since the Operation Fair Play of 1977, and after which, you know, your rejoining of PP, Pakistan People's Party, for the restoration of uh, democracy, that, that's commendable. It appears that those unseen hands are really very much seen hands now and playing their part. But at, at, at all important juncture, it is the division between the political forces in Pakistan that allow the victimization of one party. Like Mr. Nawaz Sharif and his uh, fellows, they will say, that they were actually ousted by these unseen hands several times before, and so did probably the Pakistan People's Party. Do you think that there is a chance that the all the political parties, they can come under some kind of a charter of democracy too, and come up and fight for the civil supremacy together? Uh, if they want civil supremacy, that is probably the only option. Uh, the first, of course, step being in having a fair and free election in the country. If we have a fair and free, uncontested, unchallenged uh, 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 election, uh, then uh, that may be the first step towards um, development of some kind of an alliance or some kind of a uh, uh, togetherness on the issue of democracy and democratic values. Yeah, I think that that would be important because, frankly speaking, people all over the world, and especially the Pakistanis, 
in Pakistan have suffered a lot and, and they really want the, the fair chance to every citizen of Pakistan to come up and say who they want to vote, who they want to give this mandate to govern themselves. Uh, do you think any, any external powers are playing their, their roles in ensuring that there is a free and fair election? Uh, I know in the past Saudi Arabia, UAE, China and some other friendly countries have been affecting the policy of the unseen forces. Do you think something of that sort can happen now? Well, uh, all the countries you have mentioned don't have democracy and don't uh, necessarily value that uh, process uh, very much. So I don't think they can be influences to, uh, or, to or want to influence necessarily Pakistan back into some democratic situation. But they are friends of Pakistan. They come in aid of uh, this impoverished country. Unfortunately, I'm Im un impoverished. Uh, but uh, uh, the influence uh, for democracy should actually come from the West. But uh, the West also connives with its uh, uh, people uh, who uh, support it uh, through thick and thin, even when uh, they uh, shoot down uh, people and vehicles with uh, drones. Uh, attacks, etc. But uh, that is a, uh, a kind of uh, great game in which we are and we are going to remain because of our location in the kind of a center point of South and Southeast uh, Asia. South uh, East and uh, South, South uh, actually Southwest and South uh, East Asia. Thank you very much, Mr. Zahid Hassan, for your uh, enlightening thoughts on the current uh, situations in Pakistan. And I apologize, audience, because of the technical errors and difficulties. We lost contact with Mr. Zahid Hassan. But uh, it was fascinating to have um, um, for up to date and, as we say, from the horse's mouth views from uh, Mr. Zahid Hassan what's going on in uh, Peshawar. At the, moment, at the minute in the High Court decision of overturning the previous deci decision of restoring the uh, election symbol of a cricket bat to PTI, which is Pakistan Tariq and Saf. So now it appears that the Pakistan is on the crossroads again. The elections that are announced for 8th February 2024 look like happening. However, there are doubts about the level playing field and there are huge doubts by some that whether these elections will take place or not. The entire nation and, of course, the world awaits on the tenterhooks what is going on. We have seen numerous complaints of high-handedness by the police and the law enforcement agencies against a particular party, which have been witnessed by the international media. Also, there is an air of fear and paranoia in the um, electoral process basically people have lost their faith in what's going on and it is the duty of the state of Pakistan especially the law, law enforcement agencies and the uh, supreme judiciary to restore people's confidence and trust into the election process because the fundamental of progress to any country stem only and only from democracy and the democracy stems from the ability and capacity of a nation to bring the free opinion, freedom of speech, alternatively and ultimately to election process so people can come out of their houses without any coercion or fear and can go to the election booths and do the election, electoral whatever uh, selection they want to have. It appears that th things have been difficult for quite some time in Pakistan vis-a-vis -a, -vis a particular party, but what we have seen now is unparalleled, unheard of, and unprecedented. Whether there is a method in madness or it is happening very organically, nobody knows because the views and opinions are divided. 
Such is the situation that our nation, our media, and it appears even the judiciary is divided on a particular narrative for and against. So we pray that things will come back to normalcy and better sense will prevail and wish everybody who is watching this program a happy new year with the hope that Pakistan will come back to the path of democracy and progress and the sufferings of the people of Pakistan will finish, inshallah, as we say. Thank you very much and good night.